I am very excited about today's conversation. The Institutional Challenge Grant represents the Foundation's most recent effort to support research to improve the lives of youth. The Challenge Grant encourages research institutions to build sustained research practice partnerships with public agencies or nonprofit organizations in order to reduce inequality in youth outcomes. This is an exciting challenge, and I look forward to sharing more. But first, I will briefly describe the William T. Grant Foundation in our two focus areas. Next, I will introduce the Institutional Challenge Grants. Since our website houses a detailed guide, I'm going to use our time together today to focus on a few key issues. Following the introduction, we'll pause to answer some of your questions. In the second half of the webinar, I will highlight some features of the award and application and share some resources. We will then have time for another round of questions. OK, let's get started. The William T. Grant Foundation was funded in 1936 as a private grant-making foundation by William T. Grant, the owner of a chain of five and dime storms. Since our founding, the foundation has worked to further understanding of human behavior through research. We do this by focusing on the most pressing challenges confronting young people and supporting high-quality research that is relevant to youth ages 5 to 25 in the United States. The foundation has two focus areas for its grant making. Our Use of Research Evidence Initiative was launched in 2008 and refocused in 2015. The defining feature of this initiative is its focus on strategies to improve the use of research evidence, not on barriers to use. We support studies that help us understand how to create the conditions that improve the production and use of research evidence in ways that benefit youth. Our Reducing Inequality Initiative was launched in 2014. The defining feature of this initiative is a focus on responses to inequality, not its causes or consequences. We support studies that help us understand how programs, policies, and practices reduce inequalities in outcome among young people in the United States. The Institutional Challenge Grant builds on both of these focus areas and will be the topic of today's webinar. The Institutional Challenge Grant aims to connect research with policy and practice. It extends what we've learned from our work with the Distinguished Fellows Program, work on research practice partnerships, and grantee studies on the use of the research evidence. With the award, we hope to facilitate research investments that yield knowledge that is useful to decision makers and research that's used in ways that improve youth outcomes. But this is no easy task. Too often, policymakers and practitioners' ideas fail to shape research agendas. Too often, researchers lack incentives to undertake research to inform policy and practice. And too often, the capacity to bridge these gaps is lacking. Resources are needed to establish more effective ways of working. The Institutional Challenge Grant was designed with these needs in mind. The grant encourages research institutions to build sustained research practice partnerships with public agencies or nonprofit organizations, to have the partnerships pursue a joint research agenda to reduce inequality in youth outcomes, to develop the partner's capacity to collaborate and to produce and use high-quality, relevant research, and to create institutional change to value research practice partnerships and their work. While this challenge is ambitious, we believe this is what is needed to produce and use relevant research in impactful ways. Now let's take a closer look at two of these aims. Research practice partnerships are long-term, mutually beneficial collaborations that promote the production and use of rigorous and relevant research. 
In other words, they adopt a long-term view, persist beyond a single project, involve relationships between institutions, not just one or two individuals, and benefit both parties. Research suggests that these types of partnerships help researchers develop an understanding of the local context, help researchers learn about the needs and questions of policymakers and practitioners, and provide researchers with insights that can facilitate groundbreaking research. Partnerships also benefit the public agency or nonprofit organization. Research practice partnerships can help policy and makers and practitioners gain access to existing research Contribute, con contribute to research that is relevant to their context and receive assistance in their efforts to use research evidence. In short, research practice partnerships are a promising strategy for connecting research with policy in practice. While research practice partnerships can be rewarding, they are also time intensive and require support from all institutions involved. However, the policies and practices within institutions may inadvertently create barriers to a partnership's success. For example, promotion criteria often value publishing in academic outlets, publishing often, and publishing on a narrow range of topic. These incentives may make it difficult to attract and retain public agencies or nonprofits as partners and make it difficult to attract and retain experienced researchers who want to address questions that are relevant to policy and practice. These, these rewards, these incentives can also discourage members of the partnership from spending time cultivating their relationships and building the trust that is needed for the partnership to sustain. In turn, these long reward, long-standing reward structures may limit participation between and within institutions, obstruct career advancement, and undermine the longevity of the partnership. The Institutional Challenge Grant requires research institutions to examine and redesign internal policies and practices that may limit uh, partnerships. They must consider ways that encourage sustained institutional partnerships with public agencies or nonprofit organizations, look and redesign their policies and practices in ways that incentivize exceptional researchers to initiate and pursue rigorous and relevant research agendas, and think about ways to improve the partnership skills of the researchers. Strategies might include course releases, reductions in service obligation, greater flexibility or alternative promotion review policies, or courses about partnerships. We welcome your good ideas. In hope, in short, we hope the program catalyzes institutional change to better value research practice partnerships and their work. This is challenging, but as I said, we think it's a necessary next step to build and sustain partnerships that produce and use relevant research in impactful ways. And speaking of impactful research, just as a reminder, the Foundation is interested in research on programs, policies, and practices that reduce inequality in youth outcomes. We contend that inequality by economic, racial, and ethnic, and immigrant origins is pervasive that evidence often exists about the causes and consequences of inequality, but the ways to reduce inequality are less well understood. An aspiration for the partnership work is that it increases the utility and strength of the research evidence available to inform responses to inequality. We will now pause to answer some questions about the challenge grant. Uh, Kim, we've got uh, several questions that have come in. Uh, first, uh, I just want to reiterate that the slides and a recording of the webinar will be available within a few days. Great. Uh, now, here's a couple of questions for you. 
Uh, one is, could you define what's meant by a research institution? What what qualifies as a research institution for purposes of this grant? Sure. These are uh, nonprofit or public uh, in, uh, uh, institutions that pursue research as part of their mission. They may be a university that's focused on research or a freestanding research institute or policy institute. Thank you. And here's a question that we've one of our favorite questions about this grant. Um, can multiple public agencies and nonprofits be the partners? So for example, could a research institution partner with a range, a group of public agencies or nonprofits rather than just a single one? Sure, we welcome partnerships uh, that involve more than one public agency or nonprofit organization. They would have the same challenges of having to submit the agreements of how they're going to work together as a collective unit and, and in partnership with the university, but we welcome those proposals as well. Thank you. And Kim, can the PI, the principal investigator on the grant proposal, also be one of the fellows? That's a great question, and I don't think we have quite uh, have a, a set answer on that. I think it might be difficult to manage both being a fellow and assuming responsibility to direct the institutional challenge grant. Just as a reminder, we will look to that person to have instituted the changes within the institution itself uh, that value partnerships. So it might be difficult to straddle those two roles. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, one of the uh, listeners is asking how many awards there will be, so we can answer that quickly. There will be one award this year, and we, accept, we expect to pursue this program of funding for the next five years. So one this year and hopefully four more in the four years to come. Um, okay, here's another one that, uh, that's uh, a little more challenging. Uh, is a pre-existing relationship between the research center and its public partner or partners required in order to be competitive? Or can a new partnership be competitive as well? Yes, we've talked a lot about this internally. And we are being very inclusive about the kinds of partnerships that we welcome from very nascent to more long-standing. But we expect some unique challenges for those. It would be quite challenging for a new partnership to demonstrate uh, how um, it's going to work effectively together to provide evidence that it can do that. Um, but it is welcoming. In contrast, for partnerships that have been around for a long time, they'll have a more difficult time uh, demonstrating how the award adds value to their work together. So we certainly welcome a broad range but they each will face their own challenge in putting the application together. Thank you, Kim. Uh, here's one I'd like to take a shot at myself. Great. Uh, the questioner is asking about areas of interest where the partnership could be operating. Uh, the uh, questioner notices that in the application, we called out six particular areas as examples of areas where these partnerships could take place, including education, justice, child welfare, mental health, immigration, and workforce development. Now, the questioner wants to know whether other areas might be considered. And I think the answer is, make the case for it. Uh, uh, certainly, it has to focus on reducing inequality among young people ages 5 to 25 in the United States. In our broader portfolio on reducing inequality, we have called out outcomes uh, that are academic, social, behavioral, and economic. This questioner wants to know about mental health specifically, and certainly that is an area of interest, and the foundation has supported uh, considerable research in those areas. So uh, these uh, priority areas could uh, be expanded based on a case made by an applicant. Um, the, Kim, there are considerably more questions about who the principal investigator should be. For example, should it be a university administrator, like a chief research officer? What kind of role do we envision the principal investigator might play at the university? Sure, this is a great question. Or, I should say, university or research firm. Okay. Um, 
or Policy Research Institute or something along those lines. The person ha that we envision will have um, be influential both within the institution, be able to secure the resources that will lead to the success, uh, be able to influence policies and practices that can more strongly value partnerships, um, and also be someone that the field looks to uh, to set a strong example of what other leading research institutions might be. Other questions concern the types of institutional changes that we are mm -hmm. seeking for the research institution. Now, we talk about this somewhat in the request for applications, and I think that's going to come up a little more in today's webinar. So I think we'll hold off on answering this question for now, and uh, feel free to keep asking about it if we didn't quite answer your paper or your question. But this is a very important question for organizations to consider. After all, we call it an institutional challenge grant because we are challenging organizations not only to supply some of the resources for this project, but also to value and incentivize the work done through the partnership. I think we're ready to go on. Okay, great. Thanks for those great questions. We'll spend the remainder of today's time reviewing some features of the award and application. I also have a few resources I want to share. The Institutional Challenge Grant, as it says in the guide, will provide $650,000 for three years with the possibility of a two-year renewal. The renewal affords recipients the opportunity to solidify the partnership and institutional change. For us, in the long term, we'd like to see the, the partnership and the changes at our institute persist beyond the award. So this is very important to us. The monies within the grant map closely to the goals of the program. Up to $60,000 are available for a 6 to 12 month of joint planning activities. We expect this might be used to refine the protocols for partnering, select fellows, work through the agreements, and further strengthen your relationships. Funding will also help cover costs for the partnership to conduct research to reduce inequality in youth outcome. The award also includes funding for the equivalent of one full-time or two half-time mid-career fellows per year for two years. And that's a mouthful. <laughs> the idea is that you have one or two fellows each uh, in the, in the sec likely in the second and third year to help pursue the research activities. Each fellow must commit at least six months of time to do this work, and this in part is to help them get a deep understanding of the settings that they are working in, um, and so there's not frequent turnover in that regard. Also, we focused on mid-career fellows. These are researchers who bring considerable skill and expertise to the work that they do, and are also at a time at their career when they can devote time to conducting uh, research that might unfold at a slower pace uh, or take place in the practice community. Resources are also available to support activities that develop the capacities of both partners. On the research side, as I mentioned before, the capacities might try to strengthen the researcher's skills to be a good partner. What does it take to work with someone from policy or practice setting? On the policy and practice side, there may be capacities or infrastructure within the public agency or nonprofit that need to be shored up or bolstered, and funds could be used for those purposes. A frequent question that we often hear is, whether the $650,000 also covers an indirect. And the answer is yes, the award includes an indirect cost allowance of up to 15% of the direct costs. And importantly, 
As Adam just mentioned, the research institution must contribute the equivalent of one full-time or two half-time fellows for one year. Now, this is in part because we want folks to contribute resources to demonstrate their commitment to the partnership, to recruiting high-quality researchers to do this work. And so this seemed like a reasonable and useful uh, uh, contribution, both to create more fellows who are engaged in the work, perhaps a cohort that could also learn from each other, and to bring the person power to conduct the research.